today we are talking about a video by Mumbo Jumbo, Hermitcraft 6, episode 128, The Emerald Generator. <laughs> Greetings, this is Gintian. Mumbo Jumbo created a video where he shows off his really cool trading station for his villagers. He refers to it as a emerald factory, and of course he titled the video Emerald Generator. Because I want to build one of these things, I decided to make a video on exactly how to build it. What you see beside me currently is my version of his emerald factory. Here's a quick screenshot from Mumbo's video for comparison. What you see now is several different versions in different stages of the actual trading station for the villagers. I had to create multiple versions and figure out the parts that were skipped in Mumbo's ver video. Of course, his video was not one of his redstone videos, so he did not show all the steps as he would in a redstone video. I've been watching Mumbo for years, and he's the reason I started making Minecraft videos. Let's start by creating a box three blocks tall and 11 blocks wide. Next, dig out a box two blocks tall and mark off the inner blocks as seen here. I use smooth stone to mark those off. As you notice, this creates a box five by five with the inner portion being three blocks by three blocks. Next, we lay out a nine by nine grid of blocks. It can be any color. I chose pink concrete and make the middle block additionally one higher and it should be a different color or different stone than the other nine blocks below it. This of course is not a requirement, it just makes it easier to follow along. Mumbo uses a different color palette and different blocks in his construction as well. Next, we want to surround that central block with sticky pistons with the sticky part facing up. Then we'll want to add the blocks that go on top of that. I'm using smooth stone blocks so they're easier to count. And this is the floor where the zombie will stand upon. I also add one block in the middle, which is what the zombie will be walking around. Next cover the floor all the way down at the bottom with redstone in a square all the way around the outer box as seen here. Next we're going to build a pathway for the redstone to go all the way down to the lowest level and we are going to fix it so that the redstone is powered when the lever is off so when we turn the lever on it will unpower the bottom pistons you can see i added the first repeater into the circuit and left it on the one game tick position there's the lever that we can use to test this segment of the redstone circuit next we will go down here and add in another repeater once I add in the redstone torch, it will create an inverter, which will then power the circuit after that, as you can see here. Next, we're going to add in the repeaters in the bottom circuit to actually power the pistons. Three repeaters go here. One two and three now those pistons are powered now one goes here and then three go on this side finally one last repeater here and now all of these pistons are powered on off lever on and now let's go ahead and add in the upper pistons for three pistons, we need to position the blocks like this. Note that the middle block is one block down. 
Then we apply the pistons. Okay, with that each works. One facing inward in a row. Now we repeat one piston and three on the final side. Next, we add the half slabs that will cover up the zombie when the zombie is lowered. Then place the blocks so that we can power these pistons. Make sure you put redstone on every block and put in the repeaters as indicated. Also, make sure you connect all the redstone and don't forget and miss a spot like I did. You need a repeater each time you're going into a block and you need one coming out of a block unless that block is powered directly by a lever or repeater. Now when the floor comes up, the pistons pull the top slabs back and when the top slabs come in, the floor is lowered down one block. Now we cover things up with blocks and carpet. And here's a good example of it working. Now the floor you stand on while trading with the villagers is one higher. Therefore, I have to move the lever over to the side and put in the floor all the way around. Now, since I moved the lever, I have to change the direction of some of the repeaters or it won't work. Now, well, let's go ahead and fill in the floor and we can go from there. Still not working. I need to fix another repeater or add one so the circuit will go back to working. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, that works. We are back and the floor and ceiling are now done. I made it four blocks tall and a pyramid roof of half slabs on top of that. You can do the roof any way you want. The next thing we need to do is put the block around the edge that will determine what occupation your villager will have. The first example you saw at the beginning of this video was done with composters, which made them farmers. This one I am using blast furnaces, which makes them armorers. <laughs> By the way, a continuity error is an error where consistency is not maintained between cuts in a film. In this case, you see a zombie before I put a zombie into the build. I discovered this during editing. My bad. Next, you need to put a dispenser one block above the magenta block you see in the center, and it needs to be pointing downward. I then use a glass block as a filler. You could use dirt or anything else because this block is going to be removed. This will give you something to attach the iron trap doors and you want to do that all the way around and filling in the corners as well as seen here i will remove these upper two dispensers as they were just filler so that i could place the dispenser i wanted in the correct place next we attach a two wide layer of half slabs to the top of the dispenser and in case you missed it, I also removed the glass block. This is the one that the iron trap doors were attached to. This means there's now an open space between the bottom of the dispenser and the magenta block. Now we'll just finish this up. And then we're going to place four blocks on the edges of this platform and place redstone between the blocks and the dispenser. All that's left now is to place the button on the same side as the lever. And then I'm going to light this place up. Don't forget to light it up or you will have unwanted mobs. 
turn the lever off and it opens up for a zombie to be placed inside. Let's go check the lighting underneath. And I thought so. I didn't light it up down here. So let's kill the creeper and light it up. Okay, let me speed this up. And then all we have to do is fill in the hole and get out from under this and repair the damage. And then we can work on putting a zombie inside. There's a zombie. Now we just close the lever and there he is, all set. Now we just add some villagers. Oh, and be sure to add them on the carpet, not underneath there. Hey, luckily these villagers step out onto the carpet because then they can't get back. And I'll put five villagers in there and they all become armorers. And just to show you how it works, you press the lever and now the zombie can change them all into zombie villagers. Once that's done, you close the zombie back up and you would press the button which would dispense weakness potion and then use your apples, golden apples, to cure the zombies. As always, I want to help you enjoy watching or playing Minecraft anywhere. If this is the first time on my channel and you want to get the most out of your Minecraft experience, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click on the bell so you know when I produced videos. Well, there you have it. That's how you build Mumbo Jumbo's Emerald Factory. He called it that because after the villagers are cured, they have vastly improved trades. And this is what allows you to trade one pumpkin for one emerald. And that's all I have time for in this video. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.